It's back to school season and many parents are wondering how they can protect their kids. That's the case for Kelly, who wrote us with this question. My eight-year-old son, currently in second grade, is in public school and we plan on keeping him there between finances, access to Christian education, and being a light to his non-Christian friends. How can we protect him while staying in public schools? It's a great question, and it's one that we know many parents have on their minds right now as we head into the back to school season. We're gonna give you some tools today that you can use to protect your child now and throughout the school year. I'm Meridian Baldacci, and this is Ask Meridian. I want to commend Kelly for asking the right question of how to protect her child. We know that wherever you choose to place your child, you're making that decision uh, with your family's interest in mind, with your child's best interest in mind. We know that you are your child's best advocate too, and that's why you're asking how you can protect them. So thank you for asking that question. As you're thinking through this, I want to provide you with five ways that you can protect your child right now wherever they're in school. So number one, know what your child could be learning at school and what red flags to watch for. I'll give you one example, sex education. Something that's currently beginning to trend in some areas is called comprehensive sex education. And while that sounds like it should be a fact-based curriculum, it's not. Instead, it's teaching your children radical ideas about sex and gender, and it's taking those ideas and presenting them as if they're facts, as if they're the only thing that you can believe or should believe. Some of the things that your child might learn in a classroom that uses comprehensive sex education include that their biology isn't really relevant in determining their gender. So I, as a female, might really feel that I'm male, and that just means that I am male, irrespective of the body that I was born in. They might be taught that abortion or abortifacients are okay uh, and that they're legitimate options. They might be taught instead of that no means no in regards to sex, they'll be taught that yes means yes. If they consent, it's okay. Not only is that dangerous because it's setting our children up for very young premarital sex, but also because it could expose them to abusive situations and make them think that that's okay. When you're looking for comprehensive sex education, some red flag words to watch out for uh, would be words including comprehensive, age appropriate, culturally appropriate. These are all words that sound like they should mean something good, but often mean something uh, quite the opposite. For example, if you hear age appropriate, that just may mean that they've figured out a way to present sex education with these radical ideas to very young children, something you of course don't want your child to be learning. So once you're armed with what your child could be learning at school, then the second thing to do is to know your rights as a parent, because you do have rights as a parent. You have the right to review your child's curriculum, to request the lesson plans and materials that the teacher is using. You have the right to talk with school officials, to attend your child's class. There are so many ways that you can gather more information about not just what could be out there in your child's education, but what they actually are learning. You can look through your child's textbooks when they bring that home. You can look through the worksheets that they're, lear that they're uh, learning from and, and find out what it is that they're actually learning, what they're actually being taught in school and if there's anything concerning there. Now, if there is something concerning there, that's number three, you can take action. There are different avenues available to you to take action, including writing a letter or even a formal petition to your school board. Um, we encourage you, if you have specific examples of curriculum or other concerns that you want to raise, go ahead and mention those specific examples uh, so that the school board knows what you're talking about and can be held accountable. If you have school board meetings, you can attend parent teacher organization meetings. We encourage you to attend those and raise your concerns there again, using specific examples. And that's maybe especially effective there where you have uh, hopefully a number of other people attending as well who are witness to what you are saying and what you are concerned about. 
A lot of times other parents share your concerns, they're just not sure what to do. So we encourage you to voice those concerns. In some cases, you may have the ability to opt your child out of especially sex education classes. Uh, that varies by state, but if you find concerning material, we encourage you to explore whether that's an option in your area. If you've tried all of these options and you're discovering that your public school is just not responding, if you are concerned that you might have to go through all these hoops and maybe public school just isn't for you and your family, we encourage you to explore school choice. There are a number of school choice options available depending on where you live, ranging from charter school options all the way up to being able to get funds for private school or for homeschooling your child. Um, it will really vary by area, but we encourage you to look into that because we want you to be empowered to make the best decision for your family. And if it turns out for some reason that public school is not the best option, you should be able to explore other options as well. Tip number four, talk with your child. It's so important to find out not only from your child's perspective what they're learning in the classroom, but also what they're learning and hearing from other influences, whether that's just in other areas of the school, maybe it's church friends, maybe it's on TV, maybe it's social media. There's so many different influences that are coming into your child's life and can be shaping their views of important things like sex, like marriage, like our role as citizens, and our role as Christians. You want to be having these conversations with your child, not just, just as a parent uh, and because that's a good thing to do, but because you have the ability to speak into their life um, and to take action. So we encourage you to have those conversations open, candid, and frequently with your child. Now I realize that is not necessarily an easy thing to do. And you're wondering, how would I even do that? How would I broach that conversation? Or maybe maybe you're already having the conversation with your child, but you're not sure, how would you go about requesting that curriculum? Uh, or how would you find out what was, what was possibly going on in other areas besides sex education? What's going on in the locker room? What's going on at the counselor's office? How do I even find that out? Well, that's tip number five. Download our free parent's guide today. So everything that I've just shared with you comes straight out of a book that we recently released called Back to School for Parents. We put this out late last year. It's co-authored with Focus on the Family, and it is designed with you in mind. So it walks you through every room of the school that your child might interact in. So ranging from the bathroom and the locker rooms to the counselor's office to even their school-owned devices. What can they access on their computers, on iPads that the school might give them? We talk you through some of your school choice options. And in each of these sections, we help you understand not only what could be going on, but how you can find out about that, what your rights are as a parent, what your child's right, uh, rights are. So in the classroom, they have the right to free speech and the right to remain silent. So you can learn more about each of those rights and then what you can do to take action on those specific issues that might arise. This is designed to be a helpful guide to you so that you can pinpoint those areas and you can take action to protect your child today. It's called Back to School for Parents. We have the link below and we encourage you to just click on that, download it, share it with friends, find ways that you can protect your child today. And I wanna thank all of you parents, grandparents, concerned citizens who are taking action to protect children. We know that you care deeply about that and we do too. It's at our heart. And we are so thankful for you doing that. If you found this video helpful or if you know someone else who might, we encourage you to like and share this video. And if you have any further questions about this issue or about another family policy topic, please don't hesitate to email us. Write us at mail at familypolicyalliance.com. Again, it's mail at familypolicyalliance.com. And we might feature your question in a future video. That's all for today. I'll see you on the next episode of Ask Meridian.